Hey everyone, as always, welcome back to another OSCP Journey video. Um, between the holidays going on and Q4 deadlines, of course, I, I haven't really gotten around to finishing the Art of Exploitation yet. I'm on the brink. Uh, I do plan on finishing that very soon. But uh, with that said, that that's just a preface that this video is not going to be a start into kind of like my bar binary exploitation, exploit dev kind of part of this series or part of this chapter on my journey here. Um, this is going to be something uh, just mildly interesting uh, that will hopefully be helpful for those of you either out in the field doing pen test or if this happens to be something that's on the OSCP. Like I said, I haven't taken it yet and I have no idea what would be on there in at least in terms of the lab. I have a rough idea of what might be on the exam based on everything I've read, but if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, then hopefully it helped you at least learn something the same way it helped me. Um, now I say that because my original goal is kind of a moving target. So originally I wanted to do the OSCP by the end of this year. Well, I'm not ready for it yet. Like I said, I've had all these uh, different things come up that delayed the progress that I was trying to make and, and it's just not going quite on the scheduled timeline that I had originally intended. But that's okay. I'm still working towards it and definitely not giving up and this is uh, proof of, of some of that progress as well. It's kind of why I do this series. It's kind of motivation to keep going. Now, um, with that said, I'll be... Hopefully the next video in this series, I feel like I say this every time, I don't don't know, <laughs> I can't remember, but uh, the the next videos in the series will probably gear more towards uh, exploit development, binary exploitation start type stuff, so uh, like the Protostar VMs and stuff like that. I've talked about that, won't drone on too long. This video, however, is going to be a dive back into MS-17010. So one of my more popular videos is actually me uh, doing kind of an OSCP friendly version of MS-17010 um, and I do it on a Windows, uh, do it uh, against a Windows 7 box. Uh, today we're actually going to be doing it against a Windows 10 box. So for those of you uh, who aren't aware, uh, MS-17010 actually affected multiple versions of Windows from XP through even early builds of Windows 10. Uh, there's been rumors for uh, somewhat later builds of Windows 10, not of course not current versions, but uh, other alternative builds of Windows 10 are also affected apparently, but there's not really at least readily available POCs out there for that. Now, for those of you who are familiar with my video or are familiar with the repo I maintain that contains this public exploit code, um, uh, my auto blue scripts as they're called, uh, they actually have, uh, I believe it's Warwake is, is his handle. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, they actually have that person's um, original POCs that, that are up on GitHub, and that's kind of where I pull those from, but I'm only maintaining MS-17010 uh, Eternal Blue. Uh, there's like Eternal Synergy, Eternal Romance, all that kind of stuff. I'm still playing around with those, but they all work fundamentally the same. The big difference is Eternal Blue is supposed to be this big, scary RCE similar to uh, MS-08067. You don't need credentials, gives you Insta Admin. All you need is a SMB port open, right? 4445. Um, and so it's the most powerful one. Now, the other ones require access to a named pipe, which is basically a share that you can write to, and those are also really uh, beneficial and useful in a lot of ways, but it's um, require, it depends a lot more on the environment. You can't just stand up a vanilla machine and do that. You have to uh, configure shares and stuff like that, so that's why I haven't di dived too deeply into that, but it's roughly the same concept. Now, what we'll be doing here is actually more similar is yeah is more similar to um, those uh, exploits that require access to a named pipes because MS seventeen zero ten for Windows Server twenty twelve R two and Windows ten uh, requires you actually have either access to a guest user or already have uh, credentials for a local user and we'll we'll dive a little bit more into this. Uh, but it really makes this less of an RCE and more of a remote privilege escalation. Um, and that makes this kind of interesting. So this is going to be a cool way if you've already got creds and environment to actually get local admin on a machine, as we'll, as we'll see here uh, shortly. So uh, let's just dive in, I guess. Um, so I've st stood up a box. And uh, there's a couple important things. I'm going to drag this over here. Uh, this only, 
this only affects a early build of Windows 10. So let's actually look at that real quick. So uh, in the repo, I've got a new exploit 10.py. This is actually the exact same thing as exploit 8.py, but it has a couple notes I that I've wrote about uh, Windows 10. So nothing new. I didn't write any kind of crazy exploit. No credit to me. Uh, just some notes to hopefully help people out. So um, the Windows 10 build needs to be 10.240. And the uh, operating system needs to be 64 bits. So we'll look over here at this uh, VM and we'll bring up a run prompt and we'll say Winver. And we will see indeed we are running build 10240 and this is indeed a 64 bit Windows machine. If you need proof of that, then uh, we'll go to. our PC properties here. So I've got this VM spun up and it's 64 bit Windows 10 Pro blah blah blah. All right. All right. So this is build 10 240. I'm going to shove that back over here. Actually, no, we'll keep it over here for now. There's a couple more things we're going to look at. So in my notes, I've got a couple key things. So for in order this for this exploit to uh, be usable on uh, Windows 10 systems, you of course need the build to be correct. Uh, and the, ex the exploit checker script that's included in the repo will actually confirm the build for, for you. Uh, the firewall will need to allow SMB traffic, so port 45 needs to be open, not filtered or closed. Uh, and a local user with no password uh, is needed, or you need to know credentials for a local user. This doesn't have to be an admin user. This can be just a standard low-privileged local user, which is what we're actually going to take a look at today. So, uh, a little bit further down in the script uh, is a value that has to be set if you're using this against Windows 2012 R2 or Windows 10. So here it's a note of anonymous access, uh, can access the share folder IPC, is always accessible, authenticated user, blah, 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 that's from Windows 2012. Um, this is also true for Windows 10 240, um, but for Windows 10, there is no such thing as a guest account. So even if this share is anonymously accessible uh, by a guest, um, which wouldn't be on Windows 10 because there's no guest account, um, it's more of a privest than an RCE. So at least with Windows Server 2012, you may look out, there may be a guest account with anonymous access that can write to the share, and um, you'll be able to easily pop this like you would otherwise and the only thing you have to do is set guest and no password now for windows 10 since there's no guest account there needs to be a misconfiguration with a local user who has no credentials and it's allowed they are allowed to log in remotely instead of locally by default they can't do that so somebody would have to enable that um or you need to know credentials of a local user now in this case uh i have this box set up. So right now I'm running as the admin user hack, hack me, but we can go to the control panel and we can take a look at the user accounts. And what I've got set up here, um, is this local user. This that's the name of the user. It's local user. It's a local account. That's not, uh, an administrator as we can see, and it's password protected. So we can just to observe that's not an administrator. This is a standard user and it has a password. Now the password on this is test123, which would be easily brute forcible uh, via some kind of dictionary attack. So I'm gonna move this back over here for now. Uh, so we're actually going to see how we can use these this local user's credentials and get a shell back that is actually into the authority system. And we're gonna do that using uh, the kind of like auto blue setup stuff. So uh, first what we're gonna do is cd into the shellcode directory and do our shell prep. Uh, yeah, we'll get MSF minimum to help us. Two dots one eight six is my IP, I believe, and we'll be uber elite with our ports, and we'll generate a we'll do a regular command shell just because I haven't tried that and that'll spice things up. Uh, and we'll do, we'll keep it a stage payload. That's fine because we'll use Meterpreter uh, or we'll use MS, MSF console as our multi handler. Uh, so it's going to generate our show code. And just a reminder um, while this 
while you cannot use interpreter payloads on the USCP, I do believe you can still use shell payloads. I'm giving all this advice as if I've taken it already, but this is what I understand the rules to be, and that's what I'm kind of prepping for and conveying. Uh, so this this script, as long as you stick to shell, the shell payloads um, for the Windows Command shell and not interpreter, you should be okay to use this in that environment. But if you get banned or something because of my scripts, that's that's your own problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to just wanna throw that out there because that's kind of the way I understand it. And if there's any OSCPs out there that want to confirm or anybody from OFSEC who happens to be watching this video, first off, thank you. Second off, um, that that is what I believe to be true. So that's why we're doing the shell payloads. That's why I've done it in all my other videos, and that's what makes them quote-unquote OSCP friendly, right? Uh, so there's a couple things we're going to do. Of course, first we'll start our listener prep. And... 168.2.186 Oh, nope, nope. 168.2.186 If I can type, geez. And we pick the regular command shell. It is a stage payload, and that's going to start our listeners for us. Um, so what we're going to do now is just see if... 445 is open on this machine. This should be 168.2.141. It is indeed open. And I, I, I know the IP of this box. We're not doing any kind of fancy recon. This is purely a POC. So let's see over here we have our um, listener started. Apologize, it's very late at night. I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> I was excited when I when I got this to work, much like the other one. So I was like, oh, I gotta gotta do my OCP journey video. I hadn't made one in a while, All right? So let's do our eternal blue checker pie, and this is gonna confirm some stuff for us. So like I said, uh, it will if you run this against your target, it will tell you what the uh, build is and everything. So this is Windows 10 Pro 10 and it's not patched, which means since this is supported by our exploitation script, uh, it should be vulnerable uh, as long as every all the criteria is met. So we have uh, two two of the three criteria met based on here. So first off, port four four five is open, uh, and second off, the build checks out. So the third thing is we need to know a local user account. Well, like I said, I already know the password of this user, and in my case, uh, we'll edit this. I never remember where this is. I could just search for username. Yeah, there we go. Um, in this case, the user that I have compromised credentials for is local user. And the pass is test123. Now, because this password is so easy to guess, all I ha would have to do is enumerate users uh, until I found a, a this user that worked and then brute force password. Now, there's a lot of variables that go into that when it comes to practical pen testing. Um, Probably what would be cool to do would set up responder and look for account names and stuff like that And you could try brute forcing and hope that there's not crazy AD policies set uh, Just I, I say that as a disclaimer because when it comes to pen testing in an actual environment uh, There's a lot of variables. It's not always just oh, I see a box and oh we'll pop the box Sometimes it is uh, and that's always real surprising and real fun uh, but if you're in a good hardened environment with solid security practices uh, while it may not be perfect, and while you may find your way in some other way, uh, it probably won't be through brute forcing credentials within the environment. It could be. There's just a lot of variables. I don't want anybody who's kind of new to, to this kind of stuff and straining for their OCP to think that, oh, if I see a Windows 10 box with that build in this environment, and I go type these things in, that wham, bam, you get exploit, uh, you get RCE. That's not always how this works. It could be. <laughs> I, like I said, I've seen both sides of the coin, but uh, just want to throw that out there for anybody who's a little bit newer. Right? So, we got everything that checked out, and we've got our local user and its password in there, so we should be able to exploit this no problem and get a shell back. Now, remember, that local user is named local user on purpose. That's to remind us that it is a local user. It is not an administrator. It is just a regular user on the box. It can't do anything else but access its own files and do local user stuff. So this should give us effectively a privilege escalation 
where we would normally be able to log in as that user because we know there's credentials, we want admin. And there's several LPEs we could try and different uh, misconfiguration we can misconfigurations we could look for. I believe uh, since this is an early build of Windows 10 that uh, uh, Windows 10 LPE exploit I made a video on not too long ago would uh, work here as well. But if we want to do it this way, uh, we could do we we could do that as well, and it, it would work just as good. Now the problem here is that. Uh, much like the other Eternal Blue exploits, uh, it's still Eternal Blue, and it has the potential to crash the box. In fact, the very first time I did this, box 100% crashed. So when I do this just now, uh, it might crash the box. So keep that in mind. You don't want to crash your target on your engagement uh, if if you can avoid it. And that's kind of noisy first off, and second off, you may have some uh, very angry customers and or uh, angry IT um, coworkers if you're if you're doing it for internal. <laughs> So we need our show code. Let's see all that bin. And should be able to launch. And bam, we didn't crash. We got a we got a session. So a command session open. That's great. This worked out of the box the first time with the command shell. So we'll list those sessions. Microsoft Windows. Everything looking good. So we'll say session stack I one. And oop. there we go. Starting interaction with session one. All right, sweet. So Windows 10 does have Who Am I built in, and we are in T Authority system. We are not uh, that. Uh, we don't have the permissions of that local user. We have uh, successfully provesked, um, and we can even go see. That hack me user, we can go right into their stuff and start writing files or or whatever we want to do, right? Oh, that we'll just write a file on the desktop just to be fun. Uh, what am I doing? Echo test. Ah, test txt. Yep, there you go. So that's it. That's really all there was to this. This was supposed to be a, a fairly short video. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate this exploit and explain it a little better now that I've understood it myself. This was a, a, a very awesome revelation for me to understand how this works. And this is a great way to uh, privesque if you're in an environment where these kind of things line up. Now, this is not something I would rely on, but if you notice it and you find something like this, it's pretty cool and it's nice to practice. And, and, uh, for me, it was just really cool because I always heard that when that uh, Windows 10 early builds were vulnerable to uh, MS 17.0.10, and I was just like, ah, I, it's not working for me. Like I had the same response a lot of you had was, hey, have you tested this? Oh, Windows 10 doesn't work. Oh, Windows 8 doesn't work. Blah blah blah. blah. It's because sometimes uh, there's other criteria that hasn't that has to be met. They don't all work the same way the Windows 7 version does. Um, now, Windows 8, uh, the Windows 8 variant of this actually doesn't need the credentials, I don't believe. I think it Windows 8 and 8.1, or maybe it's just 8.1, will work. That is one I have not tested, and I've explicitly stated that on the repo. I have not tested that at all, uh, but it should work the same as the rest. Uh, I've got two out of three so far that work flawlessly the way they're supposed to. You just have to understand uh, how they are working better. Now, I need to give some credit where credit's due real quick. Um, so, in that eternal blue exploit I have this link right here and I'm gonna open up a browser that'll bring over so this is how I figured all this out I wanna just kinda share where I learned this from so this is how to exploit eternal blue and get an interpreter session on Windows Server 2012 R2 this is actually a piece of documentation that is straight out of exploit DB uh, credit to, to all these folks. Uh, Sheila, I believe, is the, the one who wrote this, according to the, the author stuff. If that wasn't obvious, I'm sitting here telling you guys like an idiot. All right. Um, yeah, so this is what I, I read to kind of get a better understanding of, of how the Windows 10 exploit works, because the Windows 2012 has the same requirements as the Windows 10. Um, basically, this is all the shell codes, this is all the basic stuff that's the same across both exploits. But the key here is through guest account. So on Windows 12, 2012 R2, 
if the guest account is activated by the administrator, it can be taken advantage of. And from there, I started playing around, um, and I noticed that the, you, there was no guest account on Windows 10, and then I scrolled down a little bit more in the documentation, kept reading, and it was like, oh, if you know a user, you can just access that user. And here they have an example of Hack Me, Hack Me, uh, which in this case, Hack Me was my admin. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Since we knew the user, we were actually able to use that to uh, privesque and get a shell. Uh, you can do the same thing to get an interpreter session. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that. That was the docs that I uh, kind of read through and uh, got some tips from because that same 2012 script also has the Windows 8 exploit and the Windows 10 exploit. And it just so happens that to get Windows 10 to work, it works the same way as uh, Server 2012. All right, uh, and then as always, of course, there's the Auto Blue exploit. Most of you find this uh, very easily. It's got all all the the nice scripts and stuff to automate all everything I just did. Uh, since there is a uh, quite a few steps to getting this to work with the the compiling of the the shell code and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful, you guys. I know it was awesome to learn for me, and uh, yeah, hopefully next OCP journey video we'll be diving into some binary exploitation stuff. So. Uh, I've rambled long enough. Thanks for watching.